Welcome back on the AM show. Right before we get into our big interview, we have a conversation this morning with Dr. Kwame Asasante. He's a political scientist, also director of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana. He's a watcher of the political space. And it all has to do with the NPP naming its campaign committees, national campaign committees. Let me quickly usher in uh, Dr. Asasante. Good morning, Doc. All right, so we'll get into the details uh, shortly, but of course, uh, we have a statement from the MPP. We'll just try to uh, get into that. It says, for immediate release, it's dated the 19th of February 2024, New Patriotic Party constitutes national campaign committees. And then MPP, at its National Executive Committee and National Council, national council meetings held on Monday, February 19, approved a proposed structure for the party's 2024 national campaign and appointed some individuals to serve on the various national campaign committees. A national campaign coordinating committee, uh, which will oversee the work of all other committees, shall be chaired by the 2024 presidential candidate and assisted by the vice presidential candidate. The national chairman, general secretary, and regional chairpersons shall also serve on the national campaign coordinating um, committee. And then it talks about the advisory committee. That's at the helm of affairs. Uh, and foremost on the list, His Excellency John uh, Ejekum Kufo. There's also His Excellency Nana Dudankwe Kufuado, all members of the National Council of Elders, uh, the, the, the Right Honorable uh, Freddie Blay, uh, Madam Elizabeth Ohene, Reverend Joyce Ayi, and uh, Honorable Akosia Frima Ose Opare. Interesting there, Reverend Joyce Ayi. Anyway, um, then uh, campaign operations. Justin Kodia Frimpong as director and Henry Nanabwache as a deputy. Then we go on to campaign chairman and strategist. You would have uh, there the Honorable Dan Boche, uh, assisted by uh, Frederick Oware and Nana Akumia uh, as deputies. Then the campaign management, Frederick Oparianza as campaign manager, Dr. Chibudako, deputy research and administration, Honorable Osei Bunsu, um, Amwa parliamentary campaign, and Dr. Anyas. Uh, presidential campaign as well. Electoral affairs, no new name. Peter McMeno is there. Then the senior campaign aides, engineer Kwabne Japong. We know him. He wanted to be president as well. He contested in the presidential primary uh, or the presidential campaign uh, slot. Mr. John Buedu. Then there's Kofi Jamesi, Susan Alo, Salifu Said, Samuel Ewuku or Samuel Ewuku as we know him. Uh, Anthony Cabo, Dr. Befi, and Ni Ajay Sowa. Then campaign coordinators, Joseph Kujo, uh, who is coordinator for identifiable groups. He's been a minister. Uh, Mavis Hawa Kumsin for the coastal zone coordination. Uh, Dr. Friye, middle belt zone coordination. And then uh, Dominic Nitewo to coordinate the northern sector. Now, uh, just to wrap with the spokespeople for the presidential uh, candidate, there's Dr. Gideon uh, Boako. I saw other names, but then when it comes to the campaign uh, communications directorate, there's Dennis uh, Miracles Abwaje. He is director of communications. Mr. Abdomaku is Befi is deputy. Mr. Khomeini is deputy. And Mr. Krobia Kwabana-Sante uh, will deal with coordination on social media. It goes on and on. Dr. Mutaka fundraising, Dr. Mensa uh, research. But let me bring in Dr. Asa Asante. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Ben. Good to have you join the conversation. Now, that's quite a, a list that we have there from uh, campaign coordination. Uh, those are the very helm of affairs, the advisory committee, including the National Council of Elders and then former President John Ejekum Kufu, together with current President Nayib Dankwe Kufuado, among others. Now, I know you've taken a look at this list. What, what, on face value, does it evince, does it reveal uh, to you? Um, good morning, Ben, once again, and good morning to your listeners and viewers. Um, if you look at the, the list, there's no doubt in my mind that these are men and women of substance in the game of uh, campaign. Uh, you cannot uh, wish away the ability of President Kufo in election campaign. And you cannot say, uh, uh, we can say the same for uh, President Kufado. 
uh, because they've all prosecuted uh, campaign before one election, uh, at least on two occasions and all that. Um, apart from them, uh, if you look at some of the members, uh, they are, you know, alive to every aspect, every strategy, everything that is important in campaign. Take, for instance, uh, Dan Bucci. He's a, a towering personality in the area of election campaign and election monitoring and all that. Uh, talk about other, uh, you know, men and women within uh, the, the team that we have seen. So I have no doubt in my mind uh, that it's a quality team. But it's one thing having the team and another thing, you know, uh, campaigning and campaigning effectively. You campaign based on issues. The issues that confront this country uh, are numerous. And this is what the people are going to confront them with. Uh, for instance, issue of the economy is one of the important indices of free and fair elections. Uh, sorry, uh, an important barometer uh, for every voter to decide on who he wants to cast his vote. Whether NDC or an MPP person or any other party member who want to look at uh, the, the health of the economy and make a decision out of that. It is the normal one consideration. So that's given how far we have come from 2021 uh, up to now, we are going to account seriously for that. Uh, if you look at uh, the directive principle of state policy, it says that one of the provisions in there talks about the fact that every part of this country needs their fair share of infrastructure development. And this has been one of the considerations for voters in this country. Have they, done, have they been able to do enough uh, to warrant a take in office? This I'm not the one to say. Uh, voters will decide. Issue of corruption, Ghanaians have realized that is one of the pain of uh, this country, for which reason they want any government worth its all to be able to deal with it. Uh, this party's record relative to what the issue I'm talking about is not good enough. And evidence can be found in Transparency International Report and that of what um, uh, Ghana Integrity Initiative. Um, so uh, they have uh, a difficult task of uh, convincing Ghanaian whether they've been able to what, fight the battle head on. The issue of unemployment continues to remain an abattoir around the neck of this government and the youth uh, who have completed uh, various uh, academic programs are now parading the streets of Ghana and then doing all manner of jobs. Uh, that uh, also uh, is a problem worth considering. So there are a host of other considerations that voters take into when they are deciding on who to vote for. Uh, so the campaign team, solid as they, they are, uh, solid as it is, they, 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 they have a daunting task ahead of them. So we look forward to seeing them navigating their way through this uh, tight group of political righteousness. Now, if you look at this list of people, stalwarts, yes, Dan Boche, for example, um, you look at the former president, John Ejikum Kufu, you look at some of the names that are mentioned, um, and, and with the vice president himself being in the thick of, of things. Um, in fact, when it comes to at the National Campaign Coordinating Committee, the Vice President himself is chairing that. But then, are these people, looking at them, taking into account their experience and all that, are these people who can win an election as difficult as the one which the NPP seeks to do in terms of breaking the eight? You've mentioned uh, the economic issues and all of that. Is this a team that can execute that agenda or prosecute it? Um, if I got your question right, we're trying to find out whether this team will be able to prosecute the agenda of the campaign. Is that the case? To win an election. To win an election. Or to win yeah. the crucial 2024 election. That's what I'm saying. It's about breaking the eight. As for winning yeah. two terms, it's been on the table throughout the, this fourth Republican experience. But I'm saying at a crucial moment like this, when the MPP wants to break the eight, is this team, do you feel, capable of executing the task? They will do their best. But as to whether they will be able to convince Ghanaians as to 
uh, the things that I've talked about uh, relative to uh, campaign is another thing. Um, I must say, I've not gone to the field to be able to declare that, that, look, uh, this will go this direction or the other. But looking at, you know, information around and piece them together, you can make a sense. And the sense I make that, look, it's one thing having a solid campaign team and another um, being able to do the work. Uh, but you, you can be as good as anything, but if you don't have the raw material to work with and the tools, uh, then it's a problem. The raw materials and the tools I'm talking about are the issues that confront Ghanaian society. They are the what? The raw material. The tools are the strategies that you are going to employ to get all these things uh, put across uh, to the electorate. They have the tools, the, the, the resources, the tools, and the men and the women as well. But the issues are the problems that confront Ghanaians. And if you go around, uh, you hear the stories for yourself. So uh, they need to be able to do a very serious work. It is not going to be easy for them. But hey, um, they believe that they have something under their sleeve to share. So that's what we are looking forward to. Mm. Uh, what then would you say moving forward? Now they have a team. Uh, they don't have, in fact, in terms of the National uh, Campaign Coordinating Committee, the vice president chairs it. When he gets a running mate, that person will be the vice chair and uh, they'll take it from there. What way then will be forward for this group? What, what do you think would be the next move of the group? Well, the next move of the group is um, they have to. By now, I'm sure they have. They've done that. They should be able to have data as to uh, the problems of this country, and I'm sure they have that now. You need that uh, at the national level. You need the data that is the problems of this country at the national level, at the regional level, and constituency level. And in constituency, you need what I'm talking about, constituency-specific issues. The issues are not the same. So by this time, you should have all the data and begin to disaggregate them and decide where to, you know, throw uh, which one out. Uh -huh. the, 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 your, your, your ability to be able to have this and your ability to be able to what? Develop them into slogans, messages, and the rest of them will also what? Be a function of how you survive within the campaign uh, program. Maybe before you take leave of us briefly, are there any names in there that surprised you? Any people you felt, hmm, well, uh, that name. I mean, looking at some of them, there's no question. But are there some names you saw and got surprised by with your experience, wealth of experience in following elections? Um, I see uh, Madam Joyce, I, a very strong personality. Right. Uh, he, he doesn't um, uh, joke with his ideas and all that. Mm. But I'm wondering uh, what he's bringing on board. Uh, uh, yes, because um, I know he's highly political, um, uh, but you know now in recent times he has taken um, very strong position in, in religious affairs and all that. So I don't know uh, what is it that he's bringing on board to change the dynamics. But there's no doubt about it. Uh, her ability uh, to do everything within her power. But is it uh, religious ideas that he's going to throw out? Or uh, what is it? Because he's going to be confronted with the issue of the cathedral and the rest of them. And so uh, these are some of the things that uh, await her. But I have no doubt in my mind that he's capable of, you know, uh, navigating her way out. But he's going to be confronted with the issue of the cathedral and the rest of them. Uh, mm. that, that, that is something that will come up. But she's a very fine uh, intellectual, very fine personality. We saw her days doing the AFRC days and the rest of them. She's a very strong personality, there's no doubt. But they have been championing the cathedral agenda, and the cathedral will feature prominently in this election. The answer she's going to give is going to be what? The define, one of the defining moments uh, for. Uh, a conversation in that regard. Well, uh, that is one thing that also left me very surprised, uh, scratching my head a bit. Reverend Dr. Joyce, I is 
uh, a mother to me. Uh, uh, and of course, I've known her in a certain... So I was wondering when I saw her name in there, especially because of some comments and the accusations that I come through. But of course, she's uh, a citizen and it's, it's her decision to make about uh, where she wants to stand. So uh, obviously, everyone would have to respect that decision. But thank you very much, Dr. Kwame Asante, for uh, sharing your thoughts with us, engaging us this morning. Wish you the best thank of the day, sir. All right. That is Dr. Kwame Asasanti. He's a political scientist, a lecturer at the University of Ghana. He is also head of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana. Now, stay with us as we get into our big stories, because up next, there is that engagement with the president of Imani Africa. And uh, he's in the person of Franklin Kujo. I've been sharing, you know, he's been sharing some thoughts with me. Uh, let's find out what he had to uh, say to us. That discussion up next on the AM Show.